You know, I love Koei's Warriors franchise. Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors, you name it. There's just something so satisfying about running around the battlefield, killing thousands of Chinamen. From the Three Kingdoms to the Sengoku era to various manga franchises, it's a series that can take many, many settings and still make a great, enjoyable game. Easily, one of the most fun things about these games is speculating which historical figures will show up next or what other historical settings or licenses they may use for future titles. So, without further ado, this is my list of the top 11 Warriors games I would like to see. Why top 11? Because I like hearing myself talk. Obviously. Number 11. More Warriors Orochi. What started as a simple crossover between Dynasty and Samurai to celebrate the franchise's 10th anniversary has turned into a great series in its own right, adding figures of myth and other areas of history. This is so low on the list because we already have Warriors Orochi 3, which is one of the absolute best entries in the franchise, so I can wait a little longer for more of it. What I'd like is another title a few years down the line, preferably after a samurai title so they're not hilariously outnumbered by Dynasty. And more characters could be added from Legends of Troy, Bladestorm or any of these other settings I'm going to mention later in the list. The story should be a reboot, retelling the story of the first game since, well, that's probably the only game with a decent plot. And mix up some of the character roles like the House of Prem in place of the Soon family and stuff like that. Another idea is Warriors Orochi Empires. I mean sure, conquering China or Japan is really cool, but a world that has lands from both, as well as the entire 150 plus character roster and custom characters? Yeah, more Orochi please. In English, on Xbox. But do us all a favour and stop with the Bloody Ninja Gaiden characters already. Or at least give Ryu some new clothes, the dude must read like a dead cow by now. Number 10. Warriors Orochi includes a number of characters from the classic Chinese story, Journey to the West. From Sun Wukong to Sanzang to Nerja, so why not do a full game? There could even be bonus stages about Wukong being recruited by Kiyomori to set up Warriors Orochi. Now, obviously, this game would have to take quite a few liberties with the source material to fit these big, epic battles into the story, but at least it'd be more accurate than Enslaved. Not that it's very hard to be more accurate than Enslaved. Or more good. Yeah, Enslaved was a bit shit, wasn't it? Number 9. 2010 saw the release of the Japan exclusive and why would you not release it outside Japan sequel to Dynasty Warriors Strike Force. Since the previous game ended with all the villains being killed off, they needed a new enemy for the heroes of the Three Kingdoms to unite against. Their choice was Qin Shi Huang, the founder of the unified China in the 3rd century BC. Why? I have no idea. But it does make you think. What would a full Warriors game about his time be like? Naturally, he wouldn't be undead, or have his fury form or his beast form, but still. He could bring Xiang Yu along and add more people like his son and such. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the setting, but it could be cool to see. Especially if Qin Shi Huang suffered his historical death by consuming mercury to prolong his own life. I mean, come on. You have to laugh. Number 8. In 2007, Koei released Bladestorm The Hundred Years War. It was... okay. Oh dear, this is just... This is dire. Come on. Ah, oh, this is actually worse. Yes, the game has gotten worse by getting on a horse. Yeah. Joan of Arc, who can be considered the game's poster character, later showed up in Warriors Orochi 3 and she had a pretty good moveset. So I think 100 Years Warriors would be a cool title to make. Maybe cut back on the fictional characters and focus on the real people. 
Not really much else to say except why was it necessary for the bartender to look like Shahu Doon? I mean, why? Number 7. When looking to expand the roster for Warriors Orochi 2, Omega Force looked to the Heian period and introduced Yoshitsune Minamoto and Kiyomori Taira, and later Benke. The third game later gained a DLC stage based loosely around the Battle of Ichi no Tani, possibly testing the waters for a full release? I think a full Heian Warriors game would be a nice companion piece of Samurai Warriors, maybe throwing in some Samurai Warriors characters as unlockables. I mean, Yoshitsune is already established in Warriors canon as a badass able to hold his own against Lu Bu. Okay, he struggles against Ayane's breast, but those things are inhuman. Number 6. In 2011, Koei Canada released Warriors Legends of Troy, a title aimed at appealing more to the Western market by choosing a setting more familiar and popular amongst Westerners. A strategy that has pissed off many a Resident Evil fan, but I think Legends of Troy is a fine entry in the franchise. Okay, sure, it played more like God of War than Dynasty Warriors, but screw God of War anyway, the overrated piece of- But I think a sequel could expand on the ideas presented and bring in an even bigger roster. Maybe with everyone being played as more than once. Poor Patroclus. And have two campaigns. Just, please allow it to be a bit less gritty and more fast paced and fun. Also, don't have Shakespearean dialogue with a Canadian accent, it just sounds silly. MONSTER! Damned be the womb that bore you! Number 5. The Hundred Years War isn't the only setting involving England that would make a good setting for a Warriors game. In fact, a certain other setting has gained some spotlight in recent years with a number of games making use of it. That's right, the Crusades. The game could have two campaigns and numerous playable characters with neither side being portrayed as necessarily good or evil. Historical figures like King Richard, Robert de Saab and Saladin could make a pretty good roster of characters and who knows, maybe you could contact Ubisoft about getting Altair in there as a guest character. Hey, how's that for an idea? Number 4. As I said, Legends of Troy attempted to appeal to the western market. But while the Trojan War is certainly a great setting and one that appeals a lot to Westerners, I feel that another setting involving Greece has become quite popular in recent years. The Greco-Persian War. With the huge success and infamy of 300 and its upcoming sequel, prequel thing, the battles of Thermopylae and Plataea are now much more widely known and could make a great game. Obviously, the likes of Leonidas, Xerxes, Aristodemus, and Themistocles could make up the playable roster with the aforementioned battles, along with the Battle of Artemisium and maybe Marathon making up the playable stage lists. Koei Canada could probably be put on this project and follow my suggestions for Legends of Troy too. Oh, and I know what Leonidas' enemy officer defeated line would be. It's pretty obvious. There's no reason we can't be civil, is there? Number 3. About a year after Samurai Warriors hit the scene, Capcom saw the success of the Warriors franchise and wanted in. So they made a blatant rip-off called Sengoku Basura. Of course, both series have their strengths and weaknesses, Warriors preferring characterization and story, and Basura focusing on the over-the-top combat and characters. I've expressed this sentiment in a previous video, but I think a crossover between the two would have great potential especially with the comparisons between whiny Masamune Date and badass Masamune Dante, the monkey-esque Hideyoshi Toyotomi who wants a land where everyone can be happy, and the tyrannical, super-powered Hideyoshi Toyotomi, and of course, the fun-loving, womanizing Magoichi Saika, and the serious, female Magoichi Saika. I mean, who wouldn't want to see that? Number 2. There have been a few licensed titles among the franchise, Gundam, Fist of the North Star and One Piece, but they're all based on manga and anime franchises I don't really care about, and a lot of other people in the West don't either. So how about a Western franchise? Maybe one that's so big in Japan they included three totally out of place characters in Soul Calibur 4. Oh yeah, Star Wars. Star Wars is huge all over the world, so it's not really hard to sell someone on the setting. 
Just pick a point in the Star Wars timeline with lots of Jedi and Sith running around like the Jedi Civil War or the Clone Wars and you're all set. Or you could adapt multiple points in time like Star Wars Battlefront or do a story about time travel with an all-star cast. There's plenty of ways this could be done and it would surely be widely accepted and may bring in new Warriors fans. Plus, lightsabers. Because everyone loves lightsabers. Number 1 While Star Wars is a western franchise that's definitely huge in Japan, this next entry is one whose popularity in Japan I'm not really sure about, but even so, this is the setting I'd most like to see in a Warriors game, more than any other. The Lord of the Rings Basically, it would follow the story of the films and the books with some stuff from The Hobbit and other stories thrown in as well. You'd have playable characters like Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, Gandalf, Boromir, Faramir, Frodo, Sam, Merry, Pippin, Theoden, Eowyn, Eomer, Elrond, Isildur, Gollum, Sauron, Saruman, Wormsong, Lurch, The Witch King, and the list goes on. And they could follow Dynasty Warriors 8's example and allow players to save characters that are supposed to die. Kinda like Battle for Middle Earth. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Warriors franchise and these were just a few settings I would like to see in future titles. That being said... Seriously, Koei, where is my Xbox 7 Empires, or Extreme Legends, and why aren't the characters from Warriors Origin 3's later versions available as DLC on the Xbox? Are you seriously going to punish me because I bought the original version instead of waiting for a later one? Historical figures like King Richard, Robert de Saab and Saladin could make a pretty good roster of characters and who knows, maybe you could contact Ubisoft and work out a deal about getting Altair in there. Maybe you, could, maybe you could make a deal with Ubisoft and get Altair in there. Altair in. Maybe you could... Maybe you could make a deal with Ubisoft about getting Altair in. Altair in, what is wrong with me? Maybe you could... Maybe you could contact Ubisoft about getting Altair. Maybe you could. Maybe you could contact. What is wrong with me today? Maybe you could contact Ubisoft about getting Altair in there as a. Okay. Maybe you could. Okay. Maybe you could contact Ubisoft about getting Altair in there as a guest character. Yeah! About bloody time. <laughs>